our heart is the hardest working muscle in our body. It beats around 100,000 times a day to keep us alive. But what happens when something goes wrong? This man is about to have a sudden cardiac arrest. It starts as an arrhythmia, an electrical problem of the heart, and it usually comes with no warning. Often the person just collapses. Now, if you've ever seen someone have a cardiac arrest, even if you've been trained in first aid or CPR, you know just how terrifying this can be. Most people feel helpless. They feel unsure of what to do in the moment. Sometimes your mind goes blank. You panic. But let's stop for a moment and examine the situation. Let's imagine that you just saw this man collapse. Now, to save this man, you're going to need to use an automated external defibrillator, or AED, which will help restart his heart. Without it, his chances of survival are low. Now, you're probably all familiar with AEDs. They're in airplanes and concert halls. In fact, there's probably one in this room right now. And they're actually quite easy to use. When this man collapses, after you call 911 and begin CPR, you take out one of these devices. You open it up, and it talks you through the entire process. And today's AEDs can detect when to deliver a shock to your patient. And just as crucially, it can detect when not to. But what if in the future we could do even better? What if you could have a virtual paramedic with you instantly, talking you through the steps, showing you what you need to do, even watching to see if you're doing the steps correctly? Now, let's see how AR could help if you ever get put into this situation. Imagine this is you. You see a man lying on the ground, but now you get out your AR-powered AED. You take out the glasses. AR is now helping you save this man's life. It's automatically alerted the emergency medical services, and it's giving you step-by-step -step guidance, telling you to take off his shirt so you can place the pads. Now, you need to activate the device, and to do so, you need to pull a lever, and it guides you through that process. Now, you have two patches that you have to place for sensing and defibrillation. The first is in the left inferior chest, and computer vision guides you so you can place this in the optimal position. So place that patch. Great job. Now, you guys have to place the right superior patch, and you use the same process. Excellent. Now the system tells you that it's going to be sensing whether or not there's a rhythm that's shockable. Unfortunately, there isn't. That means you need to start CPR. Hand position is critical, and the system gives you the optimal location. Great work. Start compressions. Now your right compression rate and your right compression depth are also important. And the system has a continuous feedback loop guiding you through the process. By the way, emergency medical services are 421 meters away. Now, stop CPR. It needs to sense whether or not there's a shockable rhythm. Great news. There's a shockable rhythm. So stand clear. It's going to defibrillate. And the paramedic now arrives at the scene. And the good news is the paramedic himself also has AR. And he's able to get live event and live vital signs information. He can even get GPS guidance on where exactly the patient is located to save precious time. I'm Dr. Atul Gupta. I'm a practicing interventional radiologist in Philadelphia. But I'm not the only potential caregiver in this room. One day soon, every single one of you could save someone's life with the help of augmented reality. Now, let me be clear. What you just saw, that's a vision of the future. Just one example of how I think AR could help transform healthcare. And over the next several minutes, I want to go over a few more with you, showing you some examples of what we're working on right now at Philips. That's where I also work as the chief medical officer of something called image-guided therapy, or IGT. What is image-guided therapy? Well, it's just fancy words for what I consider to be modern-day surgery. It's using minimally invasive techniques that allow us to do what surgery used to do, or maybe even facilitate new procedures that were never possible before. If you start from the beginning, surgery goes back thousands of years. And for almost all of that time, it required us to open up the patient to see the disease. 
But now, thanks to technology, doctors like me have medical imaging so that I can see inside your body without opening you up, using things like X-ray and ultrasound, MRI and CAT scans. So when we say image-guided therapy, that's the imaging. But that's just half of the equation. The other half of the equation is therapy. Not only does technology allow me to see inside of you, but now I have access to miniature devices, things like angioplasty balloons, laser fibers, even vascular implants that I can guide through your body to treat you without opening you up. So that's the therapy. So at Philips, we're coupling our imaging to our therapy, and that's why we call it image-guided therapy, or IGT. Why does this even matter to you? Well, did you know that on average, one in 10 people undergo a surgical procedure every year? That means over the next decade, it's highly likely that you or someone close to you is gonna need one too. And that's a procedure that could take place in a room just like the one you just saw. Maybe it's a procedure to remove a tiny clot from your brain, to reverse a stroke, or a procedure to treat a heart attack, or to ablate or kill a liver cancer or lung cancer. And the magic is that image-guided therapy procedures are done through incisions not much larger than a pencil point, leaving behind just a Band-Aid. But still, for most people, an operation is a scary prospect. And I want to change that, not only by improving the clinical outcomes of surgery, but by improving people's experiences of surgery. Experiences not just of the caregivers, but also of patients. And AR is one of many technologies we're building for the operating room of the future. <clears throat> Now understand that while this is just a vision, every single solution that you're now seeing is currently in development in Philips. It's a mixture of artificial intelligence, AR, photorealistic rendering, new ways of controlling our system, and radiation-less or maybe even radiation-free ways of imaging. And I'm convinced I'm gonna be working in a room just like this at some point in my career. But AR in the operating room is about so much more than holograms. Let me show you. Here you can see how AR allows me to place my own customized screens exactly where I want them. It's perfect for ergonomics. In fact, every doctor, every technologist, every nurse that's in that operating room can have their own customized screen with data relevant to their needs. We no longer have to share looking at one big 60-inch monitor that's broken up into multiple tiny little windows. By the way, it's a monitor that never finds itself in the optimal position for everyone. Our hands are busy during the procedure, and being able to control the system with voice commands, that lets me keep focus on the patient. And because our bodies are 3D structures, it's so much more insightful to see anatomy in a hologram rather than on a 2D screen. I need to interact with all sorts of data during the procedure, and being able to control our system with eye tracking, with intuitive gestures, that allows me to keep focus on the patient, not think about the buttons. The operating room now truly feels like an extension of my hands and of my mind. AR will even allow us to beam in an expert from the room next door or even continents away. So when you put it all together, AR is not just a replacement screen. It's going to help your surgeon better understand your anatomy in 3D, interact with all sorts of relevant data. It lets the surgeon keep their focus where it matters most, on the patient and not on the equipment. And when you add in computer vision and artificial intelligence, we see even greater opportunities. We need these kinds of innovations more urgently than ever. Across the world, patients are getting older. They're getting sicker. And what that means is workloads are intensifying for physicians and for staff. And speaking of staff, staff shortages are rampant, and it's only going to grow. Burnout amongst doctors, burnout amongst nurses, it's at an all-time high. And I don't need to tell you, healthcare funds are shrinking no matter where you are in the world. So we desperately need to increase efficiency. I think that bringing our vision of AR to life, that could help seasoned physicians be much more efficient. Could help younger colleagues get up to speed more quickly. Could even help support physician assistants to take on even more advanced aspects of care. But most importantly, I think it could help more patients regain their quality of life wherever they are in the world. At Philips, we're committed to improving the lives of 2.5 billion people per year by 2030. And that includes 400 million people in underserved communities. Technologies like AR, that, could, that really could help ensure that when people need care, they have timely access to that care, the best care, no matter where you live. 
Now, we already have existing solutions to increase access to care. Here you can see the world's first fully integrated tele-ultrasound solution. It allows caregivers like this midwife to consult with an expert obstetrician, even continents away. It's remote supervision. It's remote collaboration to increase access to care. But what if we used AR to take that to the next level? Well, our research teams in Philips are working on a solution right now that could enable that same obstetrician to remotely guide a caregiver, just like that midwife, and help them scan their patient with the help of AR, guiding them through the procedure. And it's not hard to imagine a caregiver coming to your house with one of our ultra-mobile ultrasounds. They actually fit in the palm of your hand. And then they can immediately carry out a scan of both the mother and the unborn child. And if the caregiver needs help, or if they see anything suspicious, they get virtual guidance from the remote expert in the hospital. Now, I think you're all familiar with ultrasound. It used to produce images of unborn babies that look like this. But already today, our innovative ultrasound technology is creating photorealistic ultrasound images that look like this, and this, and even this. It's really amazing. I can't get enough of these images. But now, let's use our imaginations. Let's take it one step further. Not only can that doctor that's assisting the midwife view the ultrasound imagery as a hologram for better diagnosis, but just imagine that the grandparents who are living hundreds of miles away, they're also wearing AR glasses. They're also participating in this ultrasound in real time. They get to hold their soon-to-be-born virtual grandchild in their hands. So that's a taste of how we see AR making a big difference in the hands of adults. But AR can also have a huge effect when you put it in the hands of little kids. <clears throat> Having an MRI scan, that's intimidating enough for us adults, but it can be really overwhelming for kids. And when a kid is nervous, they move. So that blurs our MRI images. It makes it hard or impossible for us to read. And often the only way to help a child stay still is to sedate them. Now we already have an existing solution that greatly helps, and what we do is we bring in light and projections we bring in comforting, kid-selected sound. We even bring in animation. This helps minimize the need for sedation, and we call this ambient experience. It was built by our amazing Philips designers, and it caught the attention of Disney. Disney actually came to us. They wanted to see how they could help, help us take care to the next level for children. Now, this collaboration with Disney, it's been a big hit with kids. But now, what if we added AR to the equation? Our Philips animators did just that. Our designers created something really cool. Meet Ollie the Elephant. He's part of an award-winning AR solution. Philips designed it to make hospitals less scary for children, to minimize the need for sedation during scans. It's a gamified way to help kids get used to having their MRI before they come to the hospital. It helps them learn why it's important to stay still, they can even explore that MRI scanner in AR using their mobile device at home. And then when it's time to have the scan in the hospital, they're again guided by their friend Ollie. With this solution, parents are reassured. Children feel empowered and well-prepared. And their doctors are supported in getting the high-quality images that we need to get the most accurate diagnosis. So that's an AR solution that's already today helping to transform how we deliver care. But I want to finish by looking ahead to another vision of the future. And it's one that could help save every single one of our lives. Most of us have been to the emergency department. Now, although you're only meant to go there in a true medical emergency, people can arrive with any illness, from a common cold to a heart attack. And your treatment gets prioritized based on your clinical need, but only once you've been evaluated by a nurse. <clears throat> Sitting in that waiting room, waiting to be seen, that could be one of the most terrifying experiences in healthcare. So what if in the future we could change that? Imagine you arrive at the ER with chest pain or shortness of breath. But instead of waiting your turn, what if you knew that the existing security cameras that are already in most of our waiting rooms could now be augmented with innovative sensing technology? This camera can now also monitor your temperature, your heart rate, your vital signs. It can automatically flag to the medical staff which patients might need more urgent attention. For over a decade, our researchers have been de developing camera-based technology, 
And this could help caregivers gather patient vital signs from far away. This technology works by looking into the infrared light band using normal cameras. It's amazing. But what else could we do if we added AR into the mix? What if doctors and caregivers could take this same exact technology out of the hospital and into the field to help them assess your health with just one glance using AR? Let's go back to our paramedic from just a few minutes ago. And your paramedic has now arrived at the scene. He approaches you and your patient, but now he's able to get critical vital signs information directly from the patient through his AR glasses. And thankfully, your AR-guided CPR and defibrillation paid off. Congratulations, you've just saved a life with the help of AR. It's our ambition to improve two and a half billion lives a year. And you've just seen how technologies like AR offer tremendous opportunity to improve care. <clears throat> you know, one of the most exciting parts of my job at Philips is dreaming about the future of healthcare. And healthcare, it's a team sport. No one company can do it alone. It's our collaboration that leads to the best innovation. You just saw innovations with AR, but just imagine what we're working on with AI and robotics and better ways of treatment. And our innovations always begin with one constant belief. Together, we make life better. Thank you.